recently had the opportunity to interview Mr. Robert Sackowitz of the famed Sackowitz Department Stores in Houston, Texas, about the history of his family-owned company and about the rise of the city of Houston in post-war America. In 1927, a gentleman by the name of Jesse Jones decided he's going to end what was a battle at the time, is the way the story goes, legend has it, that Jesse Jones bought property up and down Main Street. And the Sterling family, which was part of the Humble Oil and Refining Company, which became Exxon, bought property up east and west on Texas Avenue, which is why the Rice Hotel was ground zero, because it was on Texas and Maine. And Jesse Jones, who ended up being the Secretary of Commerce and head of the Reconstruction Finance Corporation for Franklin Roosevelt during the Depression, in any case, uh, the legendary icon, Jesse Jones, um, said, I'm going to put an end to this nonsense. I'm going to build the tallest building west of the Mississippi. And I'm going to build it on Main and Rust. Came to my grandfather and he says, hey, you're going to take the first five floors of that store, of that building, which is today still, it's, it's actually the Texas Commerce uh, Bank building now, but it was called the Gulf Building for Gulf Oil back then. But the first five floors saw nothing but Sackowitz Brothers. And it was a huge expansion. My grandfather said, how are we going to do this? And Uncle Jesse, Jesse Jones, said, I'll pay for the fixtures and all the furniture and the equipment. You just put in your inventory and you carry your accounts receivable for your charge account customers. The store opened in July of 1929. And the Wall Street crash was three months later, oh, October gosh. of 29. <laughs> Had they not done that deal, I'd probably never been involved in the retail right. business because it would have been gone. The port of Houston was built in 19, was opened in 1914, exactly the same time as the Panama Canal. Hmm. Teddy Roosevelt in 1901 or two had actually signed on the same day support for both the public-private partnership, the first PPP, of, um, uh, for, for assistance in building, dredging the Buffalo Bayou to be the Houston Ship Channel, at the same time as support for the Panama Canal. So our port uh, has a wonderful saying that this is the port that built the town, mm -hmm. that built the city, and uh, the city of Houston's port capacities have continued to grow and the economy with it. So World War II comes along and we are one of the major uh, not only ports uh, but also manufacturing centers and supplying the oil. As World War II ends um, Texas comes out of it extremely well. We, as a store, were still in the Gulf building, really looking to expand because everyone <clears throat> was, uh, had this pent up demand. We had, uh, in America for five years, actually from 44 to 40, uh, from, from 1942, beginning of 42, after Pearl Harbor, December 7, 1941. Um, from then till uh, August of 45, so that's 42, 43, 44, and half of 45. All those years, everything was rationed. So people couldn't get, you know, there'd be meat one day a week that you could buy it. Uh, my father left running the stores with his father and his great uncle to join the Air Force. And actually, uh, they said, you know, we don't want you, you're 35 years old, you're not gonna be carrying a gun or you're not gonna be, you know, flying an air, airplane. We need you with your experience running stores in logistics and supply chain management. And by 1949, four years later, everything was just all this pent up demand from having been basically deprived of the opportunity to consume because of the rationing of gasoline and rationing of food and rationing of certain commodities that were all going to the military. 
<clears throat> with that rationing no longer in play, everyone wanted to buy things. So the American percentage of the economy that is now 70% consumption has been between 60 and 76% now for decades. And it started then. We became the consumer economy at that point. Um, Sackowitz was a large part of that in 1951, uh, starting in 49 actually. But in 1951, we opened this really colossal store downtown. And you can see it. It's a white marble store, it's still there. And unfortunately, it's a big parking lot now, I mean, a parking building. But this is an entire section of 12 pages totally dedicated to things in the Sackowitz store, departments, new things, all kinds of specialties. And this was, there was a 12 page section of the Post, a 12 page, say, page section of the Chronicle, and one in the press. And uh, those were the three newspapers that were existent then, now there's only one. But that store was an incredible departure. It was solid white marble from uh, Vermont Quarry. My father basically came up with the concept of how do we build this store that people want other than the ideas that we have? So would you, he sent out a questionnaire to all of our uh, charge accounts. Would you like a restaurant in this new store? Would you like a, um, uh, a fine fabrics, a fine fabrics department in your new Sackowitz store? Would you like uh, a tastemaker shop with fine chocolates, because he was a chocoholic, in, uh, in, in your new store? Would you like a um, little, children's theater to occupy your children while you shop. All these new concepts you know, he was beginning to come up with for this new store, and we did. I went from having built the stores up to uh, a chain of 18 stores and boutiques. Um, we were doing about 160 million in sales, in the $1985. Um, we were in we had six stores in Houston, we were in Dallas, we were in Amarillo, we were in Midland, we were in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and we were in uh, uh, Scottsdale, Arizona, and we had catalogs going all over the country. And these catalogs, this is one of the, this is the 1974 one, but one of the keys that we used for merchandising and marketing that I created was called the ultimate gifts. And these ultimate gifts were sort of what can I get that is really unique? And Time Magazine, Life Magazine, uh, De Sturm, I mean, Japanese uh, newspapers, magazines, everybody covered this. It was on television, Good Morning America, The Today Show, uh, Johnny Carson's Tonight Show. Um, if Saturday Night Live had been around in those days, it would have played with it like this. And, and those catalogs, that became a, a freestanding store for us on, on its own. This was the first before internet. And this was a freestanding store that we would merchandise as a, an operation on its own, even though that merchandise would also be in the stores. This became a special vehicle. I even have an article, a couple of articles, you know, on some speeches that I gave about one day, and this was in 1978, one day, we may not even need to have a physical store. We'll just do through the mail. Yeah. That was long before the invention of the internet, right. but it was the equivalent thing. The petrochemical and uh, petroleum industry is a major underpinning. It's one of the three stools, of the three-legged stools, three legs. The second is the port that I mentioned before. And the third is the Texas Medical Center. And those three employment centers have helped to build and sustain the city of Houston for decades and continue to grow. Houston's a can-do city. It has always been that way. 
since the Allen brothers, as I said, started with this uh, mosquito infested, you know, land development, which is what it was. And, you know, Houstonians, you, you tell them, here's a challenge, and they don't run from it, they run to it.